Hey guys, today I'm going to do a top 10 reasons why you should shop at your local store. Not to take anything away from the big vendors like TCG Player, Card Kingdom, Channel Fireball, Star City Games, it can go on and on. And most recently, YouTubers have been selling product as well. Support them, but at the end of the day, your local game store is where you go play Magic. So 10 reasons. Number one, the local character. You have a lot of very interesting characters at your local game store. Most of the people pushing online product, you've never met them before. You've never talked to them in person before. Maybe you've gone to a large event and you met them one time and it was life changing and life altering, but at the end of the day, the characters at your store are the characters at your store. You're always gonna have, and again, I'm going to get heavily criticized for listing them because it might not be inclusive of everybody, but you will have the people who, younger kids, you have the older dude, you'll have some creepy people, you'll have some people who do not shake your hand afterwards, and you have your really great friends, your great magic friends you see all the time, and that you actually want to kind of hang out with even when you're not playing magic, and that is pretty cool. Number two, community well-being. Locally owned businesses have to build strong communities. Um, your local game store, its livelihood is based on building a strong community for you and others like you. Now that's not easy to do and community loyalty is, it's a dime a dozen, right? It's, hey, this place has better prize support. Let's all go there. Without having the community, without a healthy community, and there's no incentive for the stores to grow the community, then you have a dead community. Next is you have local ownership, uh, and that ensures that important decisions are made based on your local playgroup. So you might not believe the store owners care about what you want or what, but based on assuming you have a good store owner. He's going to stock what you want. He's going to stock the sleeves you want. He's going to stock the perfect fit KMCs if you guys really want those. If you like Pokemon, he'll stock some Pokemon cards for you. Vanguard, Vanguard cards. The decision is made on a local basis where you sometimes even see the owner or you at least see the manager or at least you can give feedback to someone who is physical. Now, number four, uh, keeping the dollars in the local economy. This is kind of, this is very similar to when you buy off Amazon. I love Amazon, like I love Amazon. And it makes a lot of sense, but sometimes I try to buy local when I can because that the money in that local economy, I know eventually will come back. And it is a situation for singles, for instance, if no one buys singles, the store is not going to stock singles anymore. Right? If everyone's buying singles from a big vendor online, then what's the point? No one is going to support, no one's going to promote local stores if they have an online sponsor. Right? So let's say I, I was sponsored by ABC Games. Right? I, why would I ever tell you to go to your local game store? I would be like, nah, you should buy from ABC Games. We have the cheapest price. And the other key component here, uh, number five is jobs. It might not sound like very much, but having people in your community, uh, there's actually a mall. There's the Darebrook Mall uh, where I live. And one of the people there, uh, it's not, it's like, not like local, I'm not gonna tell you what it is because then you guys will stalk her, but she is the friendliest, the, the nicest person I've ever seen. And this is her perfect ideal job. So job creation, right? If you were to buy all your cards from a big vendor, you she wouldn't have a job. And I think it's great that she has the opportunity uh, and she does love magic. Okay, next, um, you want a bunch of entrepreneurs and you want people to want to open stores. Now, if everyone's spending money on these digital, large digital entities, then no one's gonna wanna open a store and then you have la less diversity, you have less players. It's a cycle, right? You want to promote something where people, hey, you might lose money opening store, but we as the community will support you. But if the community takes all their money and goes buys boxes online because it's slightly cheaper, 
Well, okay, no one's gonna open the store anymore. Uh, next is the public benefit. So a local store gives you an area where the public, Magic players, can go and meet each other. So sometimes even during, uh, so for people who I don't know that well, uh, and I just wanna kind of hang out, I'll be like, hey, can, you wanna meet at DNA Comics? Or do you wanna meet at Tin Games? Do you wanna meet at this store in the mall? Do you wanna meet at this store? And it's a good meeting place, right? It's safe, it's something that people will know how to get to, and a lot of times it's just a public service, right? Even if you're not playing Magic, or you're not playing Yu-Gi-Oh, there's plenty of times that I have met someone at 4 p.m. on a Saturday, or at 2 p.m. on a Saturday, and we just wanna open packs. And we just wanna open boxes, and it's a lot of fun uh, to do. Uh, next, number eight, is the, just the culture of your environment. Uh, if some places are very toxic, some places are not toxic. But overall, you have a community. Just even having a community is good enough. Number nine, competition. Uh, competition, a marketplace of lots of small stores is ideal because they have to compete against each other to offer the best prize support, to offer the best uh, participation maybe, or to have pizza and Coke. There's only X amount. If you have a lot of small stores, they're going to make a good event because by definition, one of them will outcompete the other ones. Now, if it's a digital venue, uh, what event are you going to? What physical event are you going to go to? Uh, you cannot, right? Each store is unique. Um, there's a store that has Pokemon. It's really like Pokemon Plus. I think it's like fake Pokemon Plus because the prices <laughs> are like really low if it's real. And I do buy real Pokemon Plus from uh, AmiAmi. Uh, from Japan, so it's not. It doesn't have the same tags. And then another store does gudoms, gudoms, the the modeling game, or I don't know if it's a game. Another one does Star Fighter. It does board games. Uh, there's plenty of stores that uh, just carry different products, and that gets me to number ten: product diversity. Your store is. It's like window shopping. I like to go to store and not know what I want to buy. And then, oh, hey, I, I could use this. I could use that. I, okay, let me buy some of this. And that is a interesting feeling. It's, what's it called, serendipity, where you don't know what you want, and then you go in and you find all the stuff that you don't need, but you kind of want. And that is a store. And that's why, so I'm not criticizing you going to buy that single that your store doesn't have but if your store is charging 50 cents or a dollar more for that single, just consider supporting, supporting your community because that's what it is. Uh, the people, the employees, they all get paid, the overhead. A lot of people are so stuck up on expected value, right? Expected value. Hey, I'm not gonna play at this store unless I can win against these scrubs and get tons of you know, prize support. Uh, that's not the correct way to look at it because no matter how much prize support you can get, it doesn't beat working at McDonald's for those eight hours. It just does not. Like you cannot come out with $8 cash prize support, right? And one F and M. That's very difficult to do. Uh, cash, right? Because cash is king. Now, my opinion is Support your local stores when you can. I have had a very interesting experience with the local stores I have gone to, and not in the pleasant way. There's a lot of, uh, I've explained to you guys on this channel, and it should be pretty obvious that I have, I buy a lot. Um, I used to buy a lot, I no longer buy as much anymore because I don't want to buy any new set. This has created this kind of interesting treatment, right? So I have been treated as if I was a customer who spends three to $4,000 a month. And now since I don't spend that much, then, I'm, then I can see the difference. And that has been interesting to say the least of ter in terms of spending. Uh, now, maybe one day I do spend that much money, and a lot of times I will if the deal is correct and they want to get rid of uh, single inventory, but I no longer buy cases, and none of my friends play Magic anymore, or none of those friends that we used to buy cases with play Magic, 
and it is a spacing issue. I, it's more spacing than anything else is they want to uncut, unclutter their homes. And that's why they no longer play the game. They still like it. They still have all the high value cards, but for the most part, they don't want to get involved with it anymore. Anyway, that is it. Bye guys.